This is Company Saturdays. Every Saturday we present you with another company. Today we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Veuve Clicquot. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers, today we're revealing some interesting and surprising facts about Veuve Clicquot, the mother of today's champagne. If you're a champagne drinker, you've likely heard of Veuve Clicquot. It was the very first champagne marketed across the world. It was also the first signature drink of the rich and wealthy. Verve was founded in 1772 by Philippe Clicquot Miron. Later on, Philippe's son, François Clicquot, was put in charge of the company. When he passed away in 1805, his wife, Barbe Nicole Ponsandin, was named the new head of the Champagne Empire. Barbe Nicole was known as Madame Clicquot. She made a name for herself as a pioneer in international sales of wine and champagne. She helped invent a new bottling technique that allowed Veuve Clicquot House to transport its products all over the world. Veuve is still known worldwide as one of the most popular of the upscale champagne companies. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. So now that we've covered the basics, it's time to dive a little deeper with the 15 things you didn't know about Veuve Clicquot. Number 1. Veuve Clicquot started out as a banking and wool trading company. Veuve Clicquot didn't start out as a champagne company. In fact, it was first founded over 200 years ago as mostly a banking and wool trading company. Its founder, Philippe Clicquot Miron, dabbled in champagne, but it was far from the company's signature product. When Philippe let his son get involved in the company, they started to make wines and champagnes, and soon after, it became the main focus of their empire. Number 2. Veuve founded the very first single-year vintage of Champagne. For several years in the late 1700s, the Veuve house suffered like all winemakers. There were many years of bad wines due to war and other challenges. Finally, though, the Veuve house found renewed success in 1810. Up until that year, Champagne was produced without any special vintages attached to its label. In 1810, when Madame Clicquot released her Champagne, she decided to attach a single-year vintage to it. The idea was a big hit, so she followed up the next year with the popular Year of the Comet vintage for 1811. Number 3. The name Veuve Clicquot translates to Widow Clicquot. When Philippe Clicquot Miron's son, Francois, passed away, he left his young 27-year-old wife a widow. Philippe decided to make Francois's widow the new leader of his champagne company. Barbe Nicole Ponsardin was known as a tough-as-nails manager who took risks, and she's now credited with making Veuve what it is today. However, few people know what the name of the brand Veuve Clicquot actually means. It translates quite literally to Widow Clicquot. Number 4. As hinted at earlier, Madame Clicquot is credited with having invented the technology that made international sales of champagne possible. Up until the early 19th century, champagne and other wines could only be sold locally, but then Madame Clicquot and her staff invented the riddling rack. This device offered a more efficient method for disgorgement of the final corking of champagne bottles. It allowed the bottles to hang upside down while being transported. It also allowed the Veuve House to ship champagne all over the world and is still used by champagne houses to this day. Number 5. Veuve Clicquot has an annual revenue of over $1.3 billion per year. The Veuve House has grown into one of the most profitable champagne companies in the world. It's still a very popular choice of the rich and famous today. It enjoys revenues of over $1.3 billion per year, and these numbers keep climbing. Since 1987, Veuve has been part of the Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy Group. This has contributed greatly to its stability and success. Today, thanks to its LVMH association, it owns a controlling interest in New Zealand's Cloudy Bay Vineyards. Number 6. 
Veuve Clicquot was the first to get through the Russian blockade during the Napoleonic Wars. During the Napoleonic Wars in the early 1800s, Madame Clicquot found a way to avoid ruin. Rather than lose money or success, she found a way to turn the wars into an economic advantage for her company. She managed to establish her wine house in Imperial Russia. This allowed her to get her products through the Russian blockade, and Veuve Clicquot was the first champagne house to achieve this. She also ensured her success by giving bottles of champagne to the guards who were enforcing the blockade. She went on to distribute her champagne to the royal courts all throughout Europe. Number 7. In 1987, explorers found some Veuve Clicquot bottles in a shipwreck in the Baltic Sea. Explorers have actually discovered a few shipwrecks that were carrying Veuve Clicquot when their ships went down to the bottom. One was discovered in 1987 in the Baltic Sea off the coast of the Island Islands. When the ocean divers went down, they found 168 bottles of champagne that had been bottled between 1782 and 1788. It was first thought the champagne was from the Veuve house. However, they confirmed it was actually coming from a defunct champagne house called Julger. Veuve Clicquot still insisted some of the bottles were theirs. They hired cork experts who did confirm that at least three of the bottles were definitely from the Veuve house. Number 8. In 2015, scientists discovered that the Veuve house actually had high levels of pesticides in their older vintages. When examining the contents of some of the oldest bottles of Veuve Clicquot still around, scientists discovered the champagne had very high levels of lead and arsenic. Apparently, in order to ensure large grape harvests, Madame Clicquot used a strong pesticide on her grapes. This would certainly be illegal today. However, despite these oldest vintages having such high levels of poison, they are still allowed to be consumed and sold to this day. Number 9. Veuve Clicquot was the first company to produce rosé. Despite many companies' claims they originated rosé champagne, it was actually the Veuve House that produced the first bottle. Although Ruinard was the first to produce what they claimed was rosé champagne by adding elderberry to their wines, Veuve was the first to actually create rosé by tinting their champagne with red wine. This is essentially how it's made today. It was first created in 1818 and is still made today by adding Pinot Noir to Veuve's signature yellow label. Number 10. Heather Dubrow of Real Housewives fame had a special wine cellar built for her massive Veuve Clicquot collection. Heather Dubrow of Real Housewives of Orange County is very fond of champagne, which she calls champs. In 2016, she and her plastic surgeon husband moved into a new 20,000-square-foot house. One of her first Instagram posts from the new house shows her standing in front of a large, all-glass wine cellar with nothing but the classic Veuve Clicquot champagne bottles stocked from floor to ceiling. The caption of the picture says, Moving in, hashtag priorities. In the picture, you can see 108 bottles already stocked on just one side of the cellar, and she appears to have at least 10 more cases to go. And if you enjoy the finer things like Heather, you should definitely check out our video of the top 10 most expensive wines in the world. Just click in the top right corner to check it out. Number 11. Madame Clicquot originated the practice of spearing off a champagne cork. You may have seen servers and party hosts cutting off the top of a champagne bottle with a sword or a knife. What you probably didn't know is this practice dates back to 1811. When Madame Clicquot was bribing her Russian guard friends with bottles of her champagne, they would open the bottles right there at their posts to drink. They had no other way to open the bottles, so they would use their swords to slice the top off. It was a practice that caught on and is still seen all over the world today. Number 12. The Veuve Clicquot brand of rosé celebrated its 200th anniversary this spring. It was in 1818 that Madame Clicquot produced her first bottle of blended rosé champagne. 
In April of 2018, the Champagne celebrated its 200th anniversary. To mark the occasion, Verve created a few really cool special products. One is the Verve Clicquot Anniversary Cake, which is a box containing a bottle of Verve Clicquot Rosé, constructed out of paint cans that turn into an ice bucket. They also released a limited edition non-vintage line of their famous rosé wrapped in a black anniversary foil. Number 13. Verve Clicquot sells over 1.5 million cases of champagne every year. Your average champagne house sells about 6,500 cases of champagne a year, with 12 bottles per case. Clicquot, on the other hand, sells over 1.5 million cases, or around 18 million bottles. In fact, it ships over 400,000 cases to the United States alone. This number eclipses the amount of champagne sold by any of its competitors. And when it comes to a global scale, about 300 million bottles of champagne are sold worldwide every year. Number 14. A bottle of 200-year-old Veuve Clicquot broke the record for the most expensive bottle of the brand ever sold. In 2011, a bottle of Veuve Clicquot champagne was auctioned off for over $39,000. It was reported to have been made between 1825 and 1830. It was found in a shipwreck at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. No other bottle of Veuve Clicquot has ever sold for this kind of money. It's not being reported whether the buyer ever actually opened and drank this bottle, though. However, other bottles from this era have been uncorked and are said to be very sweet but still very delicious. Number 15. They have a committee that ensures they stay true to the spirit of Madame Clicquot. Although the company has made many changes over the years, they are very aware of their heritage and their brand image. They do intend to keep innovating in the champagne market, as Madame Clicquot did over 200 years ago. However, they have put safeguards in place to ensure that they stay true to the company's original vision. The CEO of Veuve Clicquot, Jean-Marc Gallo, describes Madame Clicquot's spirit as innovation without any limits. The company has established a committee that must approve any potential innovations. If the committee determines the idea goes against the spirit of Madame Clicquot, the idea is simply abandoned. And there you have it, Alexers, 15 things you didn't know about world-famous Veuve Clicquot. Now that you've learned some more about this brand, we'd love to know. Do you think you would drink a bottle of champagne that was lying on the ocean floor for 200 years? Let us know in the comments. And of course, as a thank you for watching with us all the way to the end, what does that mean? You get a bonus. Number 16. Veuve Clicquot hosts the annual celebrity-filled Veuve Clicquot Polo Classic. Since 2008, Veuve Clicquot has hosted their annual Polo Classic in New York and Los Angeles. This event is attended by over 9,000 people every year, including some of the most famous people in Hollywood. Some of its recent attendees were Neil Patrick Harris, Alicia Keys, Nicole Kidman, and Kendall Jenner. The classic was one idea that CEO Jean-Marc Gallo has implemented in order to introduce new people to the world of Veuve Clicquot. What's more, the tickets always sell out within minutes. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.